Thank you guys. So here today we've got uh, with Studio Logic Talks. My name is Liam and we're going to be doing an interview today with, um, you know, Grammy nominated multi platinum producer um, coming straight from Memphis. Uh, you know, he's worked with people like Travis Scott, Drake, Eminem, DJ Khaled and such. Um, and he's still doing it, you know, from a pretty young age. So um, we've got here Tay Keith. Yeah, what's good, bro? Yo, man, how you doing? So... Have you been now? Because I think it's like three p.m. there. Yeah, it's three. That's it's such... three p.m. You know, it's it's. I've been out. You know, doing a little shopping today. You know shopping nice and sunny yeah, as well. Yeah, a little shopping today. Yeah, and uh, I guess you know it's like not just the elephant in the room, but you know the whole world, man. How do you find it with you know this kind of changing world with this virus that's going on? That's kind of affecting you know everyone. Right. I mean, man, it's kind of, it's kind of weird making, you know, the adjustments with it, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like me, I'm the type of person, like, I forget that I got to have my mask on. I walk in the store and it's like, yo, what you doing, man? You got to have on a mask. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, I've been having to make adjustments with that as time go. And then also like just being adjusted to like the smaller things, you know, like just being, having to go to, um, just say I have to go to somewhere and just the fact that they might be out of out of uh, supplies or inventory because, you know what I'm saying, they can't get their supplies in. It's like kind of weird, man. Yeah, man. I think, you know, it's crazy because it's like, it's every, it's like every aspect of life. It's not just, you know, you know, like the careers, but it's just day-to-day shops, just going out, meeting people and stuff. So, you right. know, it's crazy there. Um yeah, but like, how do you find it as well? I guess because it must have had a crazy impact on like the music and stuff. I presume you're still making music, you know, right. daily. And stuff, but, uh, I guess just the interaction side of it. Yeah, has it kind yeah. Of changed? I mean, yeah, it's it's just like now certain artists, you know, kind of hesitant to get in the studio. Mm. You know, it's like you can't really just work with people hands on, like. You know what I'm saying? Like you usually do. Like I was in a um, writer's camp for Warner Chapel um, this past week. And, you know, the past, I've been doing it the past two years, you know, multiple different camps. And, you know, me thinking, not even realizing it was like still like the whole COVID situation going on with, with Warner also. So it was like we had the sessions, but everything was Zoom calls and digital. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm so used to walking in a room and I'm working with this artist or I'm working in there with their artist on a session. And it was just, everything was just on the computer. They like, yeah, bro, you got to uh, log in right here and type these in and all that. And then I'm just like, damn, I'm thinking the whole week leading up to it. I'm thinking like, yeah, I'm finna get in, I'm finna have fun, you know what I'm saying? I'm finna kick it with my people and shit, you know? But it was just like, damn, the whole thing was a Zoom call. You feel me? Like the whole yeah. week and shit. So I really didn't, I really didn't just, enjoy it as much as I did, you know, but of course it's like safety first and shit like that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So it's like I understood understood everything about it. Yeah, and you feel like that there's that kind of that energy perhaps has changed as well. Like maybe something that's not in the room if you're, you know, doing it via Zoom. Um right. you feel like there's something maybe missing or it's kind of um, right. it's it's definitely missing. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's definitely missing. Yeah. Um and I guess then, you know, uh, I guess we'll take it kind of back, you know, because um, I think what's kind of interesting about you is that, you know, you really, you know, you're still very young. Like, it was just your birthday last week, I think. So, yeah, I, yeah, yeah I just turned 24. Yeah, man, happy birthday there. So it's Appreciate like, that, man. You, you've done a lot in this, you know, very short amount of time. So right. um, how would you say, perhaps now looking back, kind of, you yeah. kind of making beats really early on in your career and kind of getting your foot in the door there, how it was there, I guess, you know, was it more kind of you was producing and just kind of like selling beats or kind of more getting in the studio with the, the local artists and stuff? Yeah, it was more of me just selling beats, you know, trying to figure that shit out, make ends meet, because, you know, that was a priority. You know, the beat shit was always like, okay, you know, I love doing this one day, you know, I look at, you know, the future and, and, and I wonder like, am I gonna make it? But I gotta still pay my fucking rent next month, you know what I'm saying? Or I mm. gotta pay 
I got to pay my car insurance next week. You feel me? Or it's like, so I always had that, that thought in my head when it came to making beats. Like, I know I can make money off this shit. Let me hustle. Let me grind. Let me, yeah. let me take, take these opportunities to try to come up. And then me doing that, I was able to, you know, develop with upcoming artists and shit while I was doing it and get my beats placed with certain artists. You feel me? It was just by like, mm. you know, certain opportunities I had that I took advantage of. And uh, how did you find it? Um, cause you was born and raised in Memphis, right? So kind right. of that scene there. Cause I guess what I think is quite interesting with producers kind of, especially now in this digital age, you know, you can sell beats to people, you know, across the world. It doesn't matter where now with this kind of, this digital age it is and I think some people might forget kind of um working with artists in their communities and stuff like this so how did you find it kind of uh operating I guess in the Memphis environment and kind of uh meeting with these local artists and such um working with them yeah like how how like you saying basically how did I find a way to make it happen yeah like kind of um so I presume like some of the upcoming nights who's around your area and such. Um, right. Yeah. Um, I feel like the the thing it was with me, it was more of like just building my name up personally for them to respect me enough to want to work with me. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, any any producer try to send beats to any artist, you know, any chance they get. Rappers, rappers and artists, they don't look at this shit and be like, oh, I'm gonna fuck with his beats, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I feel like when it came to me, they looked at me like, oh, he working, he doing this, he doing that, you know what I'm saying? I wanna fuck with him type shit because I can win from it too. So it was like a, one of them situations where I felt like rappers respected me enough to wanna work with me in my city, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. just because it was, it was like a lot of producers coming up around my time, and I just kept good relationships with everybody, producers and artists. Mm -hmm. So I just built that. I guess I built that name for myself, that reputation that oh yeah, he do good business. He, you know, what I'm saying he gonna help promote your shit. You know, what I'm saying he gonna, he gonna meet up. He gonna go to the studio with you. You know, and I just kept that good relationship with every artist I'm working with, and it just worked building mm -hmm. with him. You know? Yeah, man. I'll see. Yeah, because I think, you know, it's one of the most important things, I guess, with being a producer, you, you know, you got really kind of, you got to build these connections with people and that kind of those relationships to kind of continuously work on and stuff. Right. Um, yes. Um, interesting to kind of see in that sense. Um, and I think kind of uh, as well, what I kind of seen before is um, that at the time you were kind of doing this, um, mm -hmm the beats and everything you were still kind of studying and stuff like you was in university so you still had this kind of life and this education and everything there um right. how did you kind of find that kind of uh i guess operating kind of with this music side and then that kind of you know the day-to-day -day life with uni and everything and studying you know did you ever see any like challenges there um right. kind of balance i mean there? yeah i seen challenges but i also had help with a lot of my work, you know, it was always situations where if I couldn't figure it out, I can get somebody to help me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was like one of those situations. Then on top of that, I really enjoyed college. I had fun, you know, because it was like, I was DJing out events, you know, I was just real known on campus. So it was like, it wasn't nothing. Uh, I would say that was like, deter, you know, deterring me from going to, class, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I enjoy learning. I enjoy working with my 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 colleagues and you know my you know what I'm saying classmates and shit. So mm -hmm. it was a it was like a fun journey for me. Mm -hmm. And while like the success started happening, it was like, well shit, you this close now, you know what I'm saying? What you gonna drop out and just say fuck it or you just gonna mm -hmm. keep going. So shit, I kept going. Yeah, man, that's interesting. Because I think, yeah, the, like, the crazy thing as well is like, it wasn't just kind of, I guess, you know, you was, I guess, comfortable with the music, but you really had like this career just absolutely going ham. Like you, you know, you had right. some hits, you know, Grammy nominations as well coming in and everything. Like, um, do you think it was kind of like crazy seeing how fast it was kind of happening once it kind of did happen and such? Yeah, for real. Yeah, for sure. It, you know, everything happened fast. You know what I'm saying? It's like, 
Mm. Some some shit it just like it just come at you so unexpected, you know, it don't even hit you until years later, you know what I'm saying? It was like that type of situation where it's like, damn, you know, I'm getting settled in a game now, you know, I'm starting other shit, other um, business ventures and shit, and people still respect me for even finishing school, you know what I'm saying? Like in these other in these other fields that I'm doing. So it just made me realize how big of an accomplishment that was. Mm, yeah, it's crazy, man, to keep the two balance and and I guess come out with something from both as well, you know, not to kind of give up one for the other. So you, yeah, you found this kind of, I think, this good balance between the two. Um, right. And especially, like I said, like with the kind of the career was in music, you know, I think that what was quite interesting as well, because it was like for me as well, I remember like in 2018, um, like I'd heard, you know, uh, Look Alive. Mm-hmm. and I just remember like hearing this like yo what's this you know for me especially in London all the way over here as well you know um, right. we obviously mess with America a lot but you know um, to kind of hear that and that was you know the first time we're hearing you know your producer tag and everything and I feel like right. what was crazy it was like it didn't just end there it was kind of like throughout that year it was like right. you would just hear you know you know sicko mode you would hear it you know and then even like come a year later, you know, I'd be listening to Denzel Curry and I hear you popping up. Right. Also, it's like, it's crazy that kind of consistency, I'd say. Right. Um, how, you know, how would you say it was for you kind of, you know, um, not to just kind of, you know, once you go in international and stuff uh, to just yeah. have this one track, but you just kind of kept on going and you really kept, I think that consistency. Um, right. How, how do you kind of, find you know uh it was kind of keeping up with that um i would say like the thing it is like you know every producer that comes out has like those those like those hot sh- streaks you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. it's like the moments like everybody that had one you know murder had his metro had his you know what i'm saying jesse had his like you know what have his uh pure you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Hey, it is. It's yeah. just like a, it's like for you to even reach that level as a producer already, you know, it's like a moment. But for you to keep going, it kind of set the tone for you being a super producer, you know? Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I had my moment, it was a time for me to just build my relationship and keep going and working with people, you know what I'm saying? And now, like, to this day, like, I built my relationship a lot better with a lot of people based off shit that I've done in the past, you know what I'm saying? In the mm-hmm. business, the good business I've done, you know, but uh, I feel like just personally, just working on relationships with people while I had the the moment, you know, and just building with those people. And do you find the kind of like your, your workflow and how you approach music kind of changed um, from let's say, you know, bringing it back to the kind of days in, you know, uni and stuff and making the beats there and everything. And now this change, do you see, especially with all the artists and stuff that you've been working with, that you've kind of changed either, you know, the way you work or um, the way you look at producing and such? Right. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. That shit definitely changed, you know, because even just the process of how shit flow, me being a producer, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you be in a studio with artists a lot of times, and sometimes you don't. And you know, just the fact that I can make a hit in my living room, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, send it to an artist and that shit end up worldwide is just mind blowing. You know, a lot of people wouldn't understand it because they never done it or accomplished it. But when you're in that situation and you able to, you know, create some shit like that, so mm-hmm. flawlessly, like effortless, effortlessly, you know what I'm saying, you kind of look at shit a little bit different. Mm. Well, you kind of look at, you know, kind of look at stuff a little bit different, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, do you find then, because um, what I think is quite interesting as well is that, like, you know, despite it being hip hop, you've kind of worked with a range of, like, these rappers and, you know, MCs that you've worked with, they're all very yeah. different, you know, like, when you look at, say, um, and like them compared to, like, a future and so on like this, yeah. you know. Right do you find that that kind of might change the way you look at or how you approach the collaboration um, depending on kind of how they're going to record and how they prefer to record? 
Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, it's always like, uh, you know, when you look at when you look at the different artists you work with, it's like, damn, I got to kind of adjust to their sound a little bit, but keep my own sound because that's the reason why they came to me. You know what I'm saying? But still make it acceptable enough where the people and the fans going to agree to it and not think it's some industry, you know what I'm saying? Industry mm-hmm. plant bullshit, you know what I'm saying? So it's kind of like every artist that I work with, I kind of like felt like I kind of gravitated towards their sound, but keeping my sound also. Mm. And do you ever have that kind of, I guess the classic thing that a lot of producers have is kind of, you know, when you're making a beat yourself that you you kind of envision who you already want on that beat? Um, mm-hmm. Or is it more kind of, you know, you just make loads of beats, kind of you do your thing and then you send it and then however people like gravitate towards it and kind of want to work on it. Um, that's kind of how yeah. it comes about. Would you I say? mean, it, it really depends on the artist, you know what I'm saying? Me personally, like if I'm really like, you know, uh, working with an artist like real close, then I make packs, you know, specifically for them. But when it's like artists I don't have just a good enough relationship with or haven't talked to or it's through like some A and R type of situation, mm-hmm. then, you know, that's when I just kind of send them what I got, you feel me? Or send them some shit that's kind of like some I already cooked up. Yeah, it's, um, I think it's crazy to kind of see uh you know despite how it kind of comes about you know that as i said you know there's that crazy range in the kind of arts you worked with and it's like you've worked with some you know of the biggest names in hip-hop as well you know right um is there kind of anyone still like on your radar right now in the hip-hop game that you're like really you really want to be in the studio with and such? yeah yeah bro plenty of people i mean I I done said it a lot of times, you know, told, you know, different shit, but I haven't just worked with them yet. But, like, just, like, I want to work with um, Post Malone, Jay-Z, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Who else I ain't worked with? Uh, There's so many artists, I don't want to just leave nobody out. But, yeah, those just the name of few of who I, you know, really want to work with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Who I anticipate on working with. I'm going to manifest it. You feel me? Crazy. I'm going to manifest yeah, man. it. Yeah, man. Um, I think that what was quite interesting as well, especially for me, um, you know, coming from London, is I yeah. thought one of the collabs you done, which is like crazy, was uh, an unexpected as well to hear. It was uh, with the AJ Tracy and H. Yeah, H. Yeah, AJ Tracy. Yeah, man. Like, how how did this one come about? Because you know, you know, here in London, I guess, you know, everyone really likes the kind of genres we got going here. Like, we got like grime and drill and stuff like this kind right. of cultivating here. Um, while we still listen to a lot of hip hop, I feel that the UK artists might not go towards it as much, you know. So to hear this, you know, AJ Tracy and H, you know, the two giants, you know, in uh, in the UK to link up on this song and it's a hit, you know. It's, crazy um, right yeah crazy. i mean that one about like how that happened was my people and his people uh linked up um, and it was like yeah it'd be a good idea to make that connection since of all the shit that's going on in the u.s mm-hmm. with the you know with like the uk drill and shit it was just like a, a good a good idea to try some different shit out you know what i'm saying just like just to make that make that like a like an experimental type of um, I guess like situation because we didn't know what to expect so it was like yeah I got I got this shit for you you know what I'm saying we end up cooking up a song they flew to LA like two weeks later and I ended up flying out to LA and you know I met them we was kicking it and shit it was pretty cool we just chopping up with them we shot the video you know what I'm saying and the song came out the next month bro like everything was just like that like quick spontaneous yeah and it's crazy like yeah, i see yeah. you in the video on the piano as well i think in there so it's like it's good that you yeah. see that kind of connection uh like kind of especially when it's i think unexpected as well because it's like you never know when these relationships can just form and stuff um right is it the first time that you worked with anyone kind of uk uh based yeah yeah so yeah it's crazy not hit like first time um 
And how do you find that, like, I guess, uh, now even could be a perfect time with how the world is operating a lot of people and like lockdowns and stuff, perhaps it's uh, more kind of, if not even just the UK, but you know, other scenes around the world, it's more kind of these international collabs, anything that's been on your mind um, recently. Yeah, like like you can you like repeat that one more time? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Um so like any international kind of collaboration, whether it be more UK artists, um, or any scenes that you're seeing popping up anywhere else um around the world, have you kind of um thought about kind of going into this kind of uh territory? Yeah, I mean I, I honestly want to do some more shit in the in the in the UK uh drill, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like the whole situation in UK, like I peeped the whole drill scene and how it's going, and I want to tap in with some artists and just try some shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Um, I think then we got to talk a bit best, uh, a bit about, um, you know, I guess one the importance of you know, as a producer, like building this identity and brand with like you know the tag, for example, and that production style, you know, um. I know like the producer tag is a big part of the game, you know, and you're one, as I was saying, 2018, I was hearing it everywhere. Um, how, how do you find kind of the tag kind of helps build that identity? Uh, There's a lot of ways that I feel like producers um, build the identity. Um, me personally, I looked at it like my hair, you know what I'm saying? Like I, how I used mm. to always wear my hair and like the, 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 the ponytail at the top, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was like a look that I had, you know, the chubby dude with the ponytail at the top of his head. And I just kind of ran with that as like, you know, like what was like my look and like sound wise, I kind of, you know, of course stuck with my original sound that I had mm. became trendy with. So it was like, those were kind of like the things that helped me stand out the most out of all of the, producers around the time who was coming up when that came up you feel me yeah and i feel like as well you got that kind of sonic uh kind of production you know style that's you know unique to you because like when i hear you know some of the beats that you're on it's like it can you know it still sounds very polished and professional but i feel it's got that kind of grit to it you know uh, right when I hear like, you know, nonstop, like by Drake, for example, or the Denzel Curry one with Automatic, like I can hear that kind of, um, that like the grit bounce. In the music. Yeah, and the bounce and the grit and everything. So it's like, um, do you feel that kind of just comes naturally as you keep producing? It's like that sound kind of um, is embodied with all of the stuff that you kind of put into the music. Yeah, at this point, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's just like, I just, I'm so used to it now. So I just be like, fuck it, let me throw this in. I know it's going to have the heads bobbing, you know what I'm Natural. saying? Natural. Yeah, man. And I think it's crazy, like, depending on the artist, despite the sound that it might kind of, or that sound that the artist might go for, there's still that unique bounce to it that you kind of was talking about as well. Um, so what I'd say is I kind of got like a, getting a bit short of time. So I've got kind of a two-part question, I kind of guess, um, that links into it. Because I guess how it is with your career, you know, whether it be from going from Memphis to kind of the international stage and everything, I think that networking has been a big, uh, you know, a big part of that and everything. And uh, what I thought was quite interesting is, um, for the first part of the question is, I remember watching, I think it was like mid, late last year, the uh, Dreamville Revenge documentary kind of mm -hmm. where they had a lot of artists and producers in the studio and such um and i see that you're like your name's popped up there as well with that um how kind of did you find it that environment there with so many different artists kind of being in the room at one time and different producers um linking up man that that was some crazy shit like that was a whole different type of experience, you know what I'm saying? Just like so many, like, let alone the artists, but even the producers that was there, you know what I'm saying? Like, that was the first time I had ever met Jesse. You know, it was mm -hmm. like at the Dreamville camp. And when I was talking to him and shit, I had already knew, like, bro was going to be big, like, off the rip. Like, just me having a conversation with him and where his mindset was at, I'm like, damn, this nigga think like me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, that's what type of shit he was on. Like, ah, oh, this nigga put on game. This nigga small. Like, 
I know Jensen for sure gonna be big, you know what I'm saying? And this was like, this was um, like January, I think like January 2019 last year. So bro end up like getting like hot like a couple months after that, you feel me? Mm. So that was one thing. And then just like me, like the whole Dreamville team and then like the other rappers who was there too, you know what I'm saying? All that shit was dope. It was just mm. a whole like, a lot of shit going on. And me, and also me, me, T minus, you know, cause like T minus, T minus a legend, you know. So I'm looking up the bro beats and you know what I'm saying, his career and the shit he got going on, and just keep being able to see him work and how complicated he had the shit going, you know what I'm saying. It made me, it opened my mind up to how much you know work people actually put into like a song or recording, cause he was on FS Studio and he had like a hundred different pages in the LVS studio work. I'm like, damn, T minus this nigga, this nigga cold. <laughs> For real. Yeah, it's crazy. And I guess um must have felt crazy well kind of the the way that that kind of was set up, it felt like perhaps a lot of that was gonna be spontaneous. Like you don't you never know, like linking up with so many different people that like quite literally anything could have came out of that. Right. As well. Um, so what I say is, well, um, cause I asked that question with kind of, with the situations that's going on now with the world, you know, it's like, you know, to have like a studio full of so many different artists and producers seems like it could be quite difficult now, um, in these times that we're going through. And I thought that what was quite interesting as well is I've seen that there's a couple of producers, um, um, especially like in Europe, for example, I think it's like Q beats from like Germany kind of. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that they do this thing where they kind of have like the loops um, mm -hmm. and they all just make loops and send it for kind of producers to add it. And that's how they kind of, you know, help them with the getting the production credits and everything like this. Do you see kind of this idea of just kind of producing loops to send to other producers and send around producers quite a good way to kind of make beats very efficiently? Um, especially yeah, like I say... When I, I say, when I get older, you know, I focus on it, you know what I'm saying? Like right now I feel like I'm more tapped into like, just the, 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 the percussion, 808 bounce shit, you know, that's kind of like my specialty. That's what a lot of people come to me for. And when it comes to like the, the, the melodic shit, like the melodies and shit. I have producers signed to me that do that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. they specifically do that. My producer, Grayson, you know, he produced uh, Fina. He co-produced Fina with me for uh, Ghana. Oh, Ghana. Yeah, oh, Ghana, Ghana. last album. So he specifically do that. So, you know, I really don't have, like, the urge to just do that when I got producers signed to me that, you know, that mm -hmm. I can give that opportunity to them to make that happen for certain placements. Mm, yeah. I you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and how do you feel then? Um, I guess this one is more for, I guess, advice for like uh, people, upcoming producers and stuff. Cause then, you know, as I was saying, to mm -hmm. kind of get hard to get in the studio now and stuff, how do you see kind of, um, for them perhaps that same question for you, but maybe for upcoming producers, like, um, okay, I say uh, for upcoming producers, the thing that that y'all should focus on right now is like building with artists that you know you can get in reach with. Like, you know, if you in this say you're a producer and you in, uh, I'm just gonna give you a perfect example. You're a producer and you in Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got you got all these artists in Memphis, Tennessee that's blowing up right now. That's that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? Like Chopper Gang and um like the artist Endless NT guy. Like you know if you see if you see um dumb artists coming up and you know like your cousin might be kin to to bro sister or some shit. You know what I'm saying? You know like damn. You know they can make the link for you to link up with them. Link up with them work with their artists, mm -hmm. build with their artists, record with their artists, exchange numbers with their artists. You know what I'm saying? Instagram and Twitter and all that shit cool, but when you got the number, you will send the beats right over to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you'll be able to text the beats right over to them. So whether or not they want to link back up with you in the studio or not, 
you were able to send them beats, you know, and then they're going to eventually be in the studio again where they be like, damn, I need some beats. And you might just so happen to be sending him some beats that same night, you know what I'm saying? Then he down there like, fuck it, I'm going to pull, pull this beat up and rap on it, you know what I'm saying? Now you got a placement, and who knows where that placement can get you with their artists and for you know you building with their artists, you know what I'm saying? That's the whole, mm-hmm. that's the most logical way to to get on right now during this pandemic too, because the big artists, for one, you send beats to they A and R's and shit. You know what I'm saying? You got to go through them, man. Nine times out of ten, the big artists don't have the time mentally to even go through new producer beats. You know what I'm saying? They they fuck with the same producers that they always fuck with or producers on a bigger level. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. That being said, like, I feel like when you uh upcoming producer, you get arm's reach of an artist that has good music and you feel like has potential to make it or, you know, have, have a decent buzz in your city, rather you in New York, L.A., you know what I'm saying, Miami, fucking, you know, Kansas City, Chicago, wherever you at, and you know somebody who who doing decent numbers, you know, like if they, if they got – a thousand views on their video, on their YouTube video, and they got a, a hundred likes on it, you know they got a following, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They got a following, it's people fucking with it, so build with them, like work with them, work hands on with them. They might need an engineer, record them, learn how to record, you feel me? Like all this shit, all this shit matter. Yeah, man, that's crazy. Um, It's pretty much the quote the time now, but that's like the perfect, I think you just dropped gems there, the <laughs> final part there. That's the perfect finale, man. Um, is there anything kind of that you want to kind of add about, uh, you know, the journey you've been from or, you know, um, any like... Man, what I'm going to add is, I feel like I got way more to accomplish on my journey in my career, you know, and hopefully, you know, next year from now from this day of us doing this interview i will be at a you know a, a, a different level you know mm-hmm. and if i'm at the same level i must then work hard enough you feel me mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i'm gonna yeah. leave it at that crazy man thank you for for uh joining this call you know you've been dropping gems here um and yeah for sure definitely next year you're gonna yeah. see the jay-z post my <laughs> <Malone> collabs <laughs> man <laughs> Oh, I yeah, appreciate man. it. Thank you, All man. All right, bro. Thank you.